Hello, Internet people. I'm Steve Hirsch, and in case you missed it, Drupal 11 is out. You can read all about it at a high level on the drupal.org announcement page here. One of the features that I'm most excited about is this single directory components feature. So it's a new approach to theming. It provides simplified front-end development workflow based on components. All the necessary code for each component lives in a single directory, making it self-contained and reusable. If we click through here, we'll get to the detailed documentation. On the surface here, this might look like a relatively small change. If you look at the directory structure, we'll see that single directory components, like the name says, are a directory, a single directory inside the components directory, inside your theme, inside that directory, you get a twig file. That's the template itself that's required. A YAML file of the meta information about the component that's required too. And then you're probably gonna have a readme explaining what this component does. Maybe a picture thumbnail of what the component looks like. JavaScript optional, CSS optional, but implied. And perhaps you need additional assets like a, an image or something that's always included in the component. So what's the big deal? Who cares? Uh, it is not new in Drupal that there are templates and info files and CSS and JavaScript. It's just a different directory structure. Well, uh, Drupal developers really care about directory structures. And I am I am one of those Drupal developers who really cares about directory structures. Uh, to understand why this is a big deal, we should look at where we have come from. Let's go all the way back to Drupal 7, which is simultaneously a long time ago uh, and not that long ago. I have here an old Drupal 7 site that is still kind of uh, on the internet, and there are you know a handful of themes available. There's the, the Zen theme, and what we're looking at here is the administrative 7 theme. Now we can add content, and we'll still be inside of the, the 7 theme here. So now let's look at the code for this theme. We're looking here at drupalcode.org, looking at the 7x branch of Drupal core, and we're looking at the themes directory, the 7 theme. And like Drupal 7 themes, pretty much all the files are plopped at the root. There's an info file saying what the 7 theme is. There's a template.php, a handful of overrides, the overall page template file. And most of the CSS here is in this big style.css file that's like nearly a thousand lines long. There are a few other small CSS files like Internet Explorer specific CSS files. These are pretty small. Uh, and then there's also here a sign of uh, what's coming in the future, separate CSS files for vertical tabs. Going back to an actually installed version of Drupal 7, hey, vertical tabs are a design component. What we see here, even back in Drupal 7, is a hint of like, oh, let's break out individual components to have their own CSS files. If we jump ahead all the way to Drupal 8.0.0, we can see here in the 7 theme, uh, still called 7, that administrative theme, things have cleaned up uh, a little bit. The top level theme directory has just less stuff in it because it's nested into directories. All the CSS files are in a CSS directory that's then broken out into different types of CSS, a separate directory for a whole bunch of components, including vertical tabs and pager.css and messages.css, form.css, which is, I'll guess, yeah, longer because there's lots of uh, form styling. We're trending here between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 towards a more intentional, more structured approach to isolating uh, design elements. But what we're still seeing here in Drupal 8 is the idea that we have to think about the theme as a whole. Sure, we can just think about the vertical tabs CSS, but if we're thinking about the template of vertical tabs and maybe JavaScript that goes along with it, we're coming back in the directory structure, back up top to think about the whole theme. And not a lot of developers these days want to be thinking about the whole theme and all of its Drupalisms all at once. Uh, going back to the documentation for single directory components, the FAQ here, what is the advantage of S 
DC for Drupal themes instead of the current approach. The main advantage is that it allows front-end developers to create components without requiring them to learn Drupal-specific theming concepts. Uh, that's good. Uh, however, someone will still need to understand Drupal concepts in order to utilize these components from within templates. So we are requiring people to learn less Drupal and to uh, have to think about less Drupal all at once. This jumps out to me because this is something I have been thinking about for a very long time. Uh, if we travel back in time to uh, ye old 2014, 2015, when I started giving uh, this presentation titled Rendering HTML with Drupal Past, Present, and Future uh, at, in this case, Twin Cities Drupal Camp 2015, I was saying the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed yet. The future that I was talking about is one where developers are appropriately, and even in the past, even in the present, I should say, of 2014, 2015, developers were getting overwhelmed with the number of ways in core to <laughs> control markup and control theming. Just in core, there's a lot. And then in contrib, there's a lot of ways to think about just how are we controlling what's on the page. It feels like Plinko, or maybe it feels like the game Mousetrap. It's too much. What I suggested people do instead in this 2015 uh, era is use the panels module and the concept of layout plugins. If I jump over to code again, uh, this time looking at panels module, a single layout plugin, a layout plugin that will give us a layout like this with uh, bricks, a brick sort of layout. It is a very similar directory structure to what we see in single directory components. In this one directory, we've got a .inc uh, file, which basically serves the same purpose as that YAML file of info, a CSS file, a template file, and this is simple enough. It doesn't need uh, a JavaScript file. This structure, this way of working has been the not yet evenly distributed future for a long time coming. This approach means we don't have to start by thinking about the Drupalisms when you go from whatever your design source is, be it in the past of 2014, 2015, InDesign or Photoshop as the place you design a website to now Figma uh, perhaps as the place you design a website. We don't have to jump straight to the Drupalisms of, is this a custom block or is this the rendering of a node? And if so, which view mode? No, we can start by saying, Let's just slice up the individual elements that look like the boundaries between the places we should be thinking of as design components, figure out what we call those components, and then we'll wire up the Drupalisms later. Back in Drupal 7 land, I would do that wiring up in the panels ecosystem. Now in Drupal 11, you do that wiring up in the uh, single directory component way of wiring up such things. But it's a separate question. What exact Drupal data structure are you mapping to? Now, speaking of uh, separate questions, have you yourself actually used single directory components so far? I should say I have not, uh, but I am eager to try them out uh, on my own site or, or Pantheon's uh, soon to be Drupal 11 site now that they're in core and fully stable. So let me know in the comments what uh, you think about single directory components. And of course, if you wanna try them out on Pantheon, you can always spin up a, a new fresh version of Drupal core there to try out this feature or any of the other features in Drupal. Thanks so much.